This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Joe Riley with me all the way from Ottawa, getting ready to go in to teach a class. Thank you very much for joining us, Joe. Hi. <laughs> you are with Media Relations for the Festival of Small Halls, uh, which is, is, is starting already, or it's just about to start? October. It's the first uh, three weekends in October, and you know, it's, it's, we actually ran a spring uh, edition of it, and it's our eighth season, so we're really excited. It's a very expanded and huge lineup this fall, so we're really excited to be getting out you know, across uh, eastern Ontario with a lot of venues and a lot of great artists coming to communities, uh, artists that might not normally be in those communities, right? And I mean, it is the festival of small halls. There's a lot of just little tiny community centers, small churches. And I mean, the acoustics in them are sometimes the best. Well, there's certainly one of the things that you're guaranteed is an intimacy, right? And that makes these kind of presentations so special in that, you know, whether you're in a church or in a community hall, um, it, it, you're really present there with these artists and, and it's a really wonderful way to connect with them, I find. You know, I, I've gone to see shows in uh, both in Ottawa and in other communities in these kind of settings like churches and there's just something special there. You know, last night I was reviewing some of the places that we're in and there's so much history in all these rooms as well like it's it's uh, i don't know who our location uh like like on a film like our location uh, scout has been but they've done an amazing job working with the communities and working with people to find these beautiful halls that communities have really either kept open or supported and then to bring them alive with music i mean they're doing stuff all the time in these spaces but to bring them alive with this kind of level of music is really special i think and in addition to getting all the great artists to perform as well I, I, I mean, I'm curious. I know a, a fair number of these artists and know them personally. And I just know that from, from knowing them that the idea of going into these kind of settings, like, you know, mostly artists play larger urban centers and they play in, in settings that they're accustomed to that are set up for, for this kind of live performance, right? But, you know, my sense, I was talking to Royal Wood last year before he was doing it, and he was really super stoked to be going out into communities he hasn't played before and to be playing in these kind of settings where he really feels this kind of connection with uh, with his audience. And I, I'm sure a lot of them, because of the pandemic, haven't performed very much either in the last two years. Well, I mean, certainly that's been the, 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 the story that we've heard from a lot of artists. I mean, and, and as, you know, music has moved to streaming and things like that, a really important revenue source for artists has kind of disappeared and that's selling CDs or albums, right? And being out and performing has become more and more important. So I think that, you know, having opportunities to go into communities they haven't been in before for these unique kind of presentations is, is really something they're into. And like all the artists that we're presenting are people who are creating personal uh, music that really comes from the heart. And so presenting it in these smaller settings is it, it really it just seems natural in many ways. And we're going to list some of the the. Uh, um the festivals that are going on in the area that, that uh, your TV, Smith Falls, will, the, our folks will be seeing. But what is the catchment area? Because it's pretty huge. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't put it down on a map last night and stretch it all out using Google Maps or anything, but it is really, really large. And, you know, um, it's, it, this is our eighth year doing it. It's based on a model that was created in PEI, of all places, where they started to take, um, you know, folk artists, and, you know, in PEI, they're not unfamiliar with this kind of approach of like Kaylee's and things like that, right? Community gatherings around music. Um, and, but, you know, uh, Mark Monaghan and the crew that works on, on Blues Fest and City Folk saw this model working really well out there and said, let's bring this to uh, Eastern Ontario. And the, the area is really large right now. And there's a lot of great shows happening. Now, I know there's, there's so many of them going on. Are you going to be able to get out to most of them? Um, you know, whether or not I can get out to all of them or not is, is, is going to be tricky because, again, they're spread out all over the place. But like I said before, getting into other communities to see these kind of shows with artists that are really special is, is a wonderful thing. So I'm certainly hoping to get to some of them. And, you know, one of the things about this kind of an event is that, you know, there's artists whose names I, I recognize, like, you know, the Irish Descendants and, and, and things like that. But there's also artists like on our kickoff weekend, like Quote the Raven, 
who are appearing at Union Hall in Mississippi Mills. I'm not as familiar with them. And I think it's a really great opportunity if you're a music fan like, like I am to then get out and see music you're not familiar with that the programming team has uncovered and is you know giving these opportunities to play in these settings. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's list a few of them that are going on. October 6th, we've got Quote, of the, Quote the Raven at Union Hall in Mississippi Mills. Uh, October 7th, uh, Charlie Acourt at Chafee's Locks at Community Hall in Elgin, Ontario. October 7th, uh, Susie Vinnick with um, uh, Mo Kenny at Burt's Rapids, their community hall. That's a beautiful hall. I've been in it many, many times. Again, yep. uh, October 8th, Susie Vinnick is going with Miss Emily at Althorpe Bolingbroke Community Hall, and that's in Maberly. That's our. That's just our first uh, weekend. That's the first weekend, yes. And I'm not listing all of them that that are the this festival of the halls. This is just who uh, who might be watching our your, your TV Smith Falls would be able to to see. But for more information, they're they are listed on your website and on uh, your Facebook page too. But we're just listing a few of them. That's just the first weekend. It's amazing. Susie Vinnick, who's who's in there twice, is just such a, a wonderful performer. It's been great to watch her growing her fan base over the years as a kind of a blues and acoustic folk blues performer. She's super warm. Like I, I seeing her in these kind of settings would just be amazing. And, and like you, you just said some blues folks music. There's all types of music too. We've got a little bit of country in there, that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Celtic, it, it, mm -hmm. it really is a broad spectrum of what we generally call a, acoustic music, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. So October 14th, we've got Irish, Mithin, with, uh, correct my name if I'm pronouncing their names wrong, Irish Mithin with Willie Stratton in Elgin United Church. That's a beautiful church too. And I have to just interrupt just for a second. Irish Mithin, an artist who I saw at the National Arts Centre a couple of years ago for the first time. I knew not much about her. Live, this woman is phenomenal. Her songs come from a really deeply personal place. She is not to be missed. Oh wow! And that's the at our Elgin uh, community, our El El Elgin United Church. So, October fifteenth, the Baron McNeils. My goodness, they're at De Delta Old Town Hall. They're a great. That one's too. sold out. That one's Bar sold out. Oh, okay. Sold out. The Baron. You've got to move fast. And you know, I noticed yes. we're going to talk about the Irish descendants later. Um, people got to move quickly on those kind of tickets because uh, the Mc Baron McNeils is the only one on our list that's sold out. But a couple of them might get there. Okay, okay. Because actually, McIsaac, he is going to be at Joshua Bates Center in Athens, and he was performing somewhere else as well, too. He is. Yeah. He's still, there's still tickets available. Okay. Ashley played with us last year, a phenomenal fiddler. If you oh, want to see yeah. fiddling on the finest, check out Ashley, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then October 21st, Ron Sexsmith at the McDonald's Corners Agricultural Hall. Uh, October 23rd, the Irish Descendants with Jeremy Fisher in Balderson at the United Church there too. So, so much going on. That's a matinee, that one too. And, you know, Jeremy Fisher, um, it, it, lately he's been working on children's music and it's fantastic. I don't know what he, what set he's going to bring to that show, but at 3 p.m. in the afternoon with the Irish Descendants and Jeremy Fisher, certainly a family-friendly event, that one for sure. So, you know, keep that in mind that there's a couple of the, the shows that you mentioned that are, are matinees including Ashley McIsaac on the 16th. And, you know, those are really great uh, shows to expose young kids to or bring your teens and, 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 and bring them there for, for what are really special uh, presentations. Well, you know, before we, we started uh, taping this interview this morning, Joe, you were telling me a little bit about yourself too, and you're no stranger to be able to organizing these type of musical festivals. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, back in, well, when I was in my mid-20s, I got hired to... Uh, run the Ottawa Jazz Festival. And I knew nothing about running an event and not much about jazz, but they liked my energy. <laughs> so for, th for three years, I did that. And then what happened was uh, I started a family and I decided to work from home. And so I worked on the Canadian Tulip Festival. I worked on See and Hear the World at the Museum of Civilization and programming for the National Gallery of Canada's Outdoor Amphitheater wow. for about 14, 15 years. Um, and then a couple of contracts disappeared, people moved away from doing live music, and I went back to school and became uh, an elementary school teacher. I was kind of like those episodes of Fred Flintstone when he went back to high school to finish his grades. I was a lot with a lot of young, young people at university, but then I became an elementary school teacher. But I, I've been fortunate because I really love working with music and working on special events. And Mark Monaghan has uh, you know, kept me on as part of his team. Uh, to do media relations for the summer festivals in City Folk, which is in the fall coming up our second weekend um, this weekend here in Ottawa, and now also the Festival of Small Halls. 
and then uh, you know, so it's 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 an interesting balance between teaching and this, but um, you know, uh, presenting concerts and trying to present lessons, there are some similarities, <laughs> but at a smaller scale, you got to keep people interested. It's actually tougher with you know, grade twos and three. Oh my goodness! Well, you know what? You say you've got lots of energy, and if you want something done, you ask the person who's the busiest, and that sounds like they know <laughs> know who to call. So thank you very much today for joining us, Joe. I know you've got to get to class. Uh, grade two and three, that's what you teach? I'm, I'm across the board from grade one to grade six doing uh, and teaching kids with special needs as well. Oh, wonderful. Great. That's wonderful that you do that. Listen, and thanks for having us. We really want to, you know, impress upon your audience that these are special music concerts, special presentations, unique. And we're, we're happy to be welcomed into your communities. And we hope that you'll come out and check out these artists because they're, they're really excited to be out playing in your communities in these wonderful buildings. Oh, we look forward to it. So for more information, you have a website, you have a Facebook page. And my goodness, you responded very quickly to getting back to me to be able to do this today, too. So I appreciate it. Well, thank you for the time. OntarioSmallHalls.com. Lots of great information there. Great. Thank you very much, Joe. Have a great day.